right, we've got another unboxing. We got a heavy package. The unboxing. I don't even know if I'll air this unboxing. It may be long. I don't remember how many more Chang are in here, but this is around nine pounds of more Chang in here. Uh, we're on a we're on a microphone, so we have good sound. Let's let's go ahead and cut this open. Let's see what happens. These are going to be Recaram and also Gorkaram from Rajasthan. I've been getting a lot into Morchang as of late because not only are they melodic, Morchang are a very budget-friendly melodic. Not, Morchang are not an expensive style of music instrument, at least not yet. So we have a large metal box. Let's see here. Well protected. There's going to be a ton of more chain in here. I have a few. Well, I, I know that there's going to be. I got, ooh, I got a whole bunch of uh, Indian newspaper. I'll use them to help pack them. Let's see what we're looking at here. In the past, I would have done two camera unboxings, two camera shots edited together. This is going to be so long, I think it'll be beneficial just to keep it one shot. Because if it's manageably, oh yes, there we go. These are ones I've seen a lot in the past, and I have one of the moons from my own collection. Let's take a gander at it. We'll, let the, we'll, we'll bring it back up here. We'll let the camera refocus. We're not as fancy as fancy today with our unboxing. The moon. I refer to this as the brass moon. This is a Gorka Ram. <laughs> Very good draw. We can actually take the draw out of it by pushing the reed back. I might leave that one. All these might be draw stories. Oh, we have a, a peacock one here. Let's check this out. Plays very much like Morchang. Here we have. Oh, I don't remember what this is called. I think I just referred to it as Brass Morchang. Give them a good wipe off with coconut oil. I should be cleaning these before I even put them in my mouth. But. I've never been a, I've never been that smart of an individual. I just wipe them off real good. Wipe them down with coconut oil. I would suggest for anyone in your own unboxings, wash your harps first, then dry really thoroughly, then hit them with coconut oil. Yeah, there's still some evidence of the manufacturer on these. I believe they all are oiled as well. I, I request that often that harps be oiled before they're mailed out. It helps them show up without any tarnish or rust. The, the, the brass ones, it's not as big as a deal for them to be oiled before they're shipped out. But when you're dealing with, we're going to be dealing with a lot of the iron one wood shop. The iron are some of my favorite styles of Morchang. The um, brass has kind of a softer more woody sound if that's even uh, the, I, now these are not musical terms i'm using these are my own descriptions of what i think it sounds like get, take out some more of this let's see if we can find some steel ones and we'll have plenty of newspapers indian newspapers i got plenty of russian newspapers from all my unboxings that i sometimes package them in but Indian newspapers, I don't think I have any of them. Oh, here we go. Here is, let's just take a look down here. Here is the Rekka Ram in steel. The Rekka Ram have been consistently getting better. I see that they've shown up without rust. I do like that. A couple parts of the wide. Eh, more Chang. Um. They've been showing up. We'll come, we'll come back up top. 
they've been showing up with a lot smoother finish uh, than they have in the past. I see they've ground off or filed off a lot of the evidence of the forge. Let's go ahead and see if they're, yeah, they're fairly clean. Let's give a listen to the heart. They've been consistently more melodic as of late. Oh, that's got good melodic characteristics. Let's try another heart one. Yes, no draw in the Rekka. And fairly clean melodic character. Gorka are a little bit more buzzing. A little bit more... Ah, some of them are draw stuff. I don't know what what trait or what words to use in describing them. Uh, I've, describing, I've described them in the past as droning melodics, which isn't an actual term. It's something that I invented uh, or a term that I, I invent words all the time. Um, but all jaw harps or all jaw harps are a drone instrument. So to use the term drone melodic isn't, isn't accurate because I guess all harps are droning. Let's track a few more of these. Or the large iron. Oh, that is. I I said in the past, I'm like Recaram is going to be one to watch out for. These are, that is a clean, melodic bell ring. They're not as sensitive, or as loud as some of the Russian ones I played, but that is a nice clean. Melodic. Try another one. Oh, that's one with um, a little bit more flexible of a read. Yeah. Oh, that is good to see. Wrecker Ram is uh, is the newest of the makers, I believe, in in Rajasthan. I think he might be the brother of Mohan. I'm not sure on that. Don't quote me. I am not an authority nor a good source of information, but uh, yes, his the quality and the sound, there we have very consistent gaps of his instruments has been going up with every shipment I get. Yes, ah, that is that is good to hear. I'm going to be doing a whole bunch more cleanup with these because we see there's lots of uh, evidence these are hand forge instruments. Just keep it going. This And this unboxing may end up being too long. I might have to break it into a couple different pieces. Or I may not be able to air all of it. Let's see what we've got here. What have we got? Uh, more Rekka steel. We have, this is, uh, I don't know what he refers to it as, but this is uh, what I referred to as a hybrid. In the past, they've been a little bit more flexible, a little bit more lower in tone than uh, a lot of the traditional Morchang. I've seen more and more Morchang makers getting into the uh, more of the mid-range tones. Uh, let's see how this one is. I refer to it as a hybrid. Oh, the unboxings just keep getting bigger and bigger. It shouldn't be something I complain about. I'm fortunate to find good jaw harps all the time. Life, another hybrid. More Chang. They're handmade, so they're kind of very... Each one sounds different. Each one has its own kind of characteristics. We'll keep this unboxing going. <laughs> the unboxing. I think there's 40 some harps here. I don't think I'll be able to play every one. We have, looks like a fiddle. We 
have a more modified of a squished pattern. Oh yeah, that's getting that's getting right down in the mid range. Uh, it's like more Chang are are crossing over, kind of blurring the lines between more Chang and some other style. For a lot of people, especially for their first more Chang, I would suggest getting uh, one a little bit lower in tone, a little bit more flexible of a read. Some of the really high ones have a. Uh, a stiff trigger, which may not be ideal, especially in the first instrument, but these are these are pretty flexible as far as more chain go. Uh, what do we got here? Oh yes, we got a. A whole bunch of gork. Oh, this table's so full of harps. <laughs> it's getting full. What do we have? This is a this is a copper harp. This is a gorka. I tell gorka a lot of the times they have the little X marks etched into them. Yeah, that's a good sound of harp. It's Kind of pretty. Some of the Gorka have hints of purple to them. I believe that may come from a, from a heat tempering. This one, I'm not sure what even to call it. Don't know if that's a Cobra or what that that sign that design is on the back. <laughs> Oiling, keep moving. Oh, <laughs> got a more chain that I haven't played here coming up in a couple more chain. This is the flat style. I have one of the flat style. Oh, I had it hanging on my wall. Oh, there. Go. I really enjoy these flat style. I believe that's a kind of a handmade copper style of riveting. <laughs> No draw. In a lot of instances, I enjoy not having a draw. I enjoy the uh, the cleaner uh, content of the harp. And in some instances, I like having a draw. It's what I refer to as the yakut. It's not yakushin. It's just kind of yakut in shape. <laughs> Now these next ones coming up. I played two tongue or two reeded harps in the in the past, but I've never played a two reed morjang. Oh, that one's pretty. A lot of purple in it. Surprisingly, that has a draw. Very, very strange sounding instrument. Really pretty though. That hints of purple. I see hints of blue. Very, very unique. First uh, two-tongue morching. In comparison to the other two-tongue harp I've played in the past, um, a glazerin, this one does seem a little bit easier because your mouth isn't as open as far, but not quite as sensitive. Let's see what this one's like. Oh, that is a, that is a strange beast.
appreciate that bit of weird. I don't know. I might have to keep one for myself. Well, uh, maybe for the thumbnail, we'll just hold it up here. I very seldom get good thumbnail pictures because when I'm demonstrating harps, I move them all around so it's hard to snap a screenshot of them. Let's see. What's this? A lot of tape on it. Now, there might be some stuff in here that's also not harps. They let me know that they're sending a, a Christmas or holiday gift. I'm like, oh, that is cool. Tis the season. But this may very well be harps in here. We never know. I'm beginning to think this may not be a harp in here, Ben's it's as well as it's tape. Or it may, I don't know. Okay, this is interesting. Let's take a look at this. Now, my pronunciation of this, when I finally get around to showing you it. Oh, that's cool. Let's stay in the harp studio. I believe this is Ganesha or Ganeshi. Don't fault me for my pronunciation. I am a horrible pronunciator. Oh, that is gnarly. I think it's a elephant god, I think. I'm not sure what which one this is. Oh, yeah, those are staying in the Harpery. Those are staying in my studio. Those are cool. Thank you. <laughs> Very nice. Tis the season. I like that. I especially like the elephant one. That's. I wonder what the elephant is holding. I'm going to have to do some research. I am... Um... A very ignorant person. I don't know much about uh, cultures of others. And, uh, give me an excuse to learn. Let's get back to the heart. It's just been easier to cut these rubber bands than detangling them all. I have plenty of rubber bands. Da -da -da -da. With this only being a one camera unboxing, you're probably getting a lot of shots of me just looking down. The... Uh, the brass Afghan. Well, that'll, that'll work. Well, some other styles here. I'm not going to demonstrate every single one of them. I'm going to make sure they play and clean them. Oh, they're cute. Man, the unboxings are getting huge. I've got, besides just this, on my, on my desk, I've got so many harps. Here we have, ooh, just sold my last mustache last night. This is the brass mustache. Brash mustache. Oh, we're going out. We're already 18 minutes and we're, we might be halfway done. That draws like a pencil. Oh yeah, that's a, that's a drawer. Some of these have drawn really, really well. Sometimes I'll take them and I'll move the reed back in line. A draw results from a reed being either curved or slightly offset up front. Sometimes I'll uh, clean the melodic character up of them by realigning them. And sometimes if it feels like it wants to be a draw starter harp, I'll leave it draw starting. I'm not sure what to call this style. I like the crimp on that. No, I should probably make sure my, yeah, okay. My microphone's on. That's always a shame when you um, don't plug your mic in all the way and you do an unboxing or a, especially long video and you're like, oh, there's no audio. Should I release it as a uh, silent video? Yeah, this, which I feel like this is just a variation of this. It feels like it's the same basic frame style as an Afghan, only with the addition of wings. I believe these are all sand cast, I believe is what that'd be called. And if I uh, mistakenly describe a uh, manufacturing technique or a name on something, I am sorry, I am just a dude who loves harps quite a bit. <laughs> Beautiful sounding one. Oh, that's 
keep this moving. What's this? This may not be harps either. What are you? Yeah, I should unpackage things up here where you can see it. I have found in unboxings to uh, keep not only the utility knife handy, which I found that you don't even have to replace the utility knife blade. You can take that couple of strokes on a stone and freshen it right up. And also a little pair of scissors. These pairs of scissors with the little, the little uh, blades on them are easier to get into tight spaces, just cutting right through all this. Okay, we'll open this up like a geode. Those who are fellow rock hounds, they may know what a geode is. You know, it has another compartment. Continue a further opening of this. It's good to get restocked. It's starting to get low on more Chang in the store. Uh, I'm selling. I'm selling a lot of more Chang. They're uh, they're melodic, and they're not expensive. And I've been playing more Chang a lot. It seems like I sell more of what I get into playing, and I've been playing a lot of more Chang. This this uh, this month I've been playing. The month of December I've been doing my wooden focus. So I play uh, wooden musical instruments a lot. What is, what is going on here? What is this? Oh, gnarly. Look. See why they package that up so well. It's a little clay cup, I think. And now there may be some significance or some purpose. It's very, very cool. That might actually even be... That might be stone. I'm not sure. I think this was fastened to it afterwards, but uh, I'm going to have to... There may be some significance to this cup. I'm not sure. I'll have to ask. Gnarly, thank you. That's what I'm talking about. Very cool. Let's get back to the harp side. It looks like there's some other thing. Well, they, they're really generous when it comes to the holidays. Let's see what else we got here. I know that we got a bunch of steel work of coming in as well here. Oh, we have some more Rekka. Save these. <laughs> Look at the table. Look at all the more Chang. And they extend around the way there. Let's see here. Oh, the smaller the smaller rounds. These are all rounds. They kind of are varying in size from smaller on up to quite a bit larger. Let's just go ahead and give up. They're all the same pattern. I might have to uh, divide them up on the website. A small and a large version. Yeah, these are definitely Rekka. You can tell the Rekka because they have a zigzag pattern across them. Uh, the older Rekka kind of had a little squiggle on there. I think I like the, the zigzag pattern better. There we go. These smaller ones are getting into the stiffer. No draw. As the Rekka, you'll, I don't know if I've ever found a Rekka with a draw. He prefers uh, the, cleaner, the cleaner sound of a harp without a draw. I'm running out of table space. Another one of these. Most of the evidence of forging is cleaned up off there. Oh, that's piercing. Yes, that's a that's a stiff, it's a stiff feeling more shiny. I like that. Very piercing as we go up in tone. A lot of times the the volume goes up as well. We keep going from uh, smallest to largest. <laughs> Yes, very, very good. I guess I'm going to... Yeah, I need to clean these up a little bit further. I'm going to continue. <laughs> I think I'm going to end up playing every single one. And that's good for... Uh, there's maybe one, one or two that I didn't play. Good for testing. I always play and inspect and look them over before I mail any out. I want to uh, make sure that people are always getting what they need in a harp. This is one of the
bigger rounds. Oh yeah, that's that's a nice bell ring. Very, very manipulatable. Really re responds well to the open and the close. And all these are going to do well uh, for open close uh, style play. I believe that's the style that is in that is in Rajasthan. Rajasthan has a uh, has a tradition of open close glottis style play, and I believe melodic style. These are these are my beliefs. I am. Uh, I may be off on my facts sometimes. Keep that in mind. Let's get this one right. This is another of the large. The last one was, was right up my alley. <laughs> yep. Rucka, you are doing a fantastic job. I am I'm liking what I'm seeing. There's an increase in quality, especially amongst the Rekka. Let's see what these are. I'm going to bet these are Gorka kind of Steel. Yeah, I should have some Steel Yavs in the next one. Should be Steel Tailless. Oh no, these are more Rekka. All sorts of different styles. Oh, this is, what are we at? We're 26 minutes. We're getting to be a long, long unboxing. This is what I refer to as a rhombus pattern. Oh, yeah, that's, that's a winner. These are all, all the ones I've sampled. I have enjoyed. Don't know how much eye contact I've made with the camera today. I'm always staring at the harps. This is a long unboxing. Look at all these harps. More of an elongated uh, rhombus style pattern. Now, Rekka, you are killing it. Clean. Gaps are consistent. Now, if you're coming off of, you ever played in Morchang before, and you're coming off of like playing a lot of Russian Fargan and a lot of like Hungarian Derome. <laughs> that are really loud, really sensitive. You would have to adapt your mindset a little bit to uh, playing Morchang. Morchang are, for the most part, I would call them a melodic instrument uh, for open close style play. So it. In the past, I've called Morchang hard to play, um, but I don't think it's hard to play. I think it just requires a different mindset. I know many people who have started off playing a Morchang and didn't play any other style of instrument uh, for a year or two later on, and they didn't have any problem with the Morchang. It just requires a little bit different of a mindset than a lot of other harps. I shouldn't say a lot of other harps, some other harps. If you're going to play a Morchang, you should learn at the very least, your open, close, glottis style. That's what you're hearing me do a lot. I'm opening and closing of the glottis. Uh, be even better if you took uh, melodic lessons, which I'm going to be doing taking more. In uh, 2019, I'm going to be taking more melodic lessons. I've thought of myself as a melodic player in the past, Is it, which isn't entirely accurate. I'm going to get a sip of water. I'm starting to dry out the um, all the hot air, maybe. I'm more of a rhythmic player... With open close, with open close contact. Oh, oh, it's another, another of the rhombus style. <laughs> Keep this going. This is so many more changes. There's something else in there. I don't know what it is. What are you? I'll play the last of, uh, last of the rhombus. I don't think I found one bad apple out of the bunch. Quality control is getting better. Okay, 
newspaper. Go to the last rock. Let's see what this thing is. Thank you so much, Rekka, for sending these gifts and stuff. It's a very, very thoughtful thing to do. Luckily, I have my little scissors. But I wouldn't be able to open this. What are you? It's almost, it's flat, so I'm thinking it's almost a plate of some type, maybe? If I don't know what this is made out of, if it's fragile, so I should be careful. But I've never been a careful unpackager of anything. Oh, it's okay. This makes sense. Another thing I believe it's made out of. Yeah, that's either clay or some type of stone. It looks like it's a plate for the cup. Very cool. I like that. Let's see what we have left. Should have some tailless ones in here. And there we go. I really enjoy the Rekka steel. Start off with a tailless one. Rekka does a lot of coloring. I believe heat coloring, the tempering with his steel instruments. <laughs> Yeah, oh, I love, I love the tailless one. It, it reminds me of the, like, the look of an old-timey harp, maybe even an American-style harp. But these are not American. These are, these are Rajasthani instruments. I really, really like the tailless. I've started a lot of people off who've never played harps before on this because not only is it entirely approachable in, in respects to its thickness uh, and stiffness, it's a little bit more flexible, easy to play, and melodic character. Here we have asymmetrical steel in there. They are pretty. Let's give a listen to it. Oh, I like it. Let's try this one. One was higher, one was a bit lower. That's uh, the individuality that Morcheng have. Uh, everyone, even amongst the same model, plays a little bit different. Sometimes you'll get ones that play pretty much identical, but most of the time they vary a bit. We have, ooh, there's a medium. Oh, the heat colors are just coming out better and better on these. I should have did a two-part camera unboxing because my big camera picks up colors and details better. This is, uh, I think I would refer to it as a medium. That's almost the style of the tailless. The biggest of them are going to be the, the ones without tail. On oh, the tailless. I don't know if the word tailless is a word, but I'm a word. I'm a word inventor, I guess. This is a uh, medium steel. It's got a beautiful stiffness to it. I like more Chang. I, I like indulging in stiff more Chang when they're done right, and I also involve. I like uh, uh, playing uh, a little bit more flexible read of a more Chang as well. Here we have a couple of the of the smalls. Really pretty colors, kind of straw. This one is hints of maybe light blue. <laughs> That is that is good melodic content. Has a touch of that drone in it, which is my just just my description of the sound of it. All the all harps have a drone, um, but it seems to have more of a drone quality, more of a going on in the background, which is which I found can be your enemy or can be your friend if you're willing to use that that buzzing characteristic. Just 
beautiful. I do love the Gorka steels. There's just uh, that buzzing that we have going on in the background. It just, I've kind of figured out how to use that every time I play a harp. Every trade of it, I like to see what I can do with it. I try not anymore to say an instrument's too stiff or too flexible or there's too much of a buzz or there's not enough of a buzz. I just see what the instrument, how it wants to be played. Okay, we have two more rounds. The rest are Rekka. We're 35 minutes. Yeah, I guess we'll be running almost 40 minutes. I thought I'm like, this might be a 40 or 45 minute, and that is that is accurate. Oh, yeah, that's, that's good. That's that's good melodic characteristics. And then the last is a style or look that I have not played before. Not this one, but the next one is another round. Very good. These are Rekka. And these last two. So I don't know if the double tongue one is going to be my thumbnail on this or if this will be. We have a twist style. These are Rekka. You can tell by the markings on it. It's that zigzag pattern. Whereas if you look at a Gorka, they look like little X's or little crosses. And yes, on this twist, it's not as cleaned up. I like that. I like seeing some evidence of the forging. See so yeah, how it plays, though. That twist is, uh, I don't know if that does anything to the sound. I think it would just be an aesthetic quality. <laughs> Good bell ring. Oh, that is a... That's a good melodic instrument. That is... I almost say that's the best of the uh, wreck I've played. Let's see if the other twist has that, because I know the twist characteristic is going to be... is going to be an aesthetic thing and not necessarily indicative of quality of the harp. Let's see. A little reed that's offset slightly, very slightly to the back. Let's see if I can clean that up. I found that melodics is a plane of alignment. There we go. More of that buzzing characteristic that we hear in the in the Gorka. I think I'm gonna play on the way out with that twisted one, that first twisted one. Well, that's going to be it for this unboxing. If anybody's interested in these, get a hold of me on the Facebook or on Facebook at the Harpery, or my email is bebcorp1 at gmail.com, B-E-B-B-C-O-R-P. A lot of these will be going up on the website, theharpery.com. Uh, in the upcoming weeks and months, I'm hoping to get more of them up there. I continually, throughout the year, I try to, a little bit at a time, build the website up. I love y'all. Adios. <laughs>